Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. What we have here is the Top Don Phoenix Plus. So this is different to um, some of the other scanners that I've reviewed and things, mainly because this is not purely for key programming. There is a model that is out there uh, by Top Don that purely does key programming. It's a smaller model, and by all rights, I've used the other tablet, which was a diagnostics one, um, the 900, I think it is, and that was actually really good for diagnostics, but this was the next step up. So <clears throat> this is uh, more for um, doing advanced stuff on cars, not so much key programming, although it has the functions for most of the key programming, I don't think it would be as in-depth as the key programming model. On saying that too, this was the only model that um, has diagnostics and also could you could add the key um, key section to it where you could do all the advanced keys and e-proming and stuff like that. It was the model that I chose because the other ones had cloud platforms, were too advanced. Um, so this was like the base model that could also add that key component, making it the equivalent of like a Autel 5, 508 um, with that uh, key box, the, I think XP400. Very similar, very similar. Anyway, so I got this one because it allowed me in the future to buy that $1,500 module for advanced key programming if I needed it. Also, it has um, all the diagnostic stuff. So what this video is, I'm going to do a video just on the unboxing, so you know what's in the box, and then I'll do another video and I'll show you the functions. So let's just do unboxing today. All right, here it is here, advanced ECU coding, active test, multiple maintenance servicing. All right, so this is the Phoenix Plus. They do have other Phoenix models, but none of them suited my needs, but they might suit yours if you wish to go through it. All right, so we've got ECU coding, act, active test, all available systems diagnostics. Uh, one of the ones it didn't have was the LDV. It did have some of the other brands made by that car manufacturer, but didn't have the LDV. Like I, had, I think it has the GM, sorry, the MG, MG. Maintenance, we've got uh, oil, SAS, uh, BMS, TPMS, reset, throttle matching, etc. Uh, they're the functions that I like it for. Um, over 120 vehicles covered brands globally, step-by-step -step procedures and uh, fingerprint. Uh, one touch, uh, finger, fingertips, at, at your fingertips, sorry. One touch, auto VIN. I did try that function. It didn't work on a Hyundai, but I've yet to try it on different ones. You simply push a scan button and it'll go through and find the VIN, and then it can tell you exactly what make and model it is. Because with these types of tools, they're a lot more specific, and how do you say, you need to know the exact make and model. Um, I, I found that you go through a, a few different makes, you think it's this one, it's that one, it's not. You've got to have the right model to talk to the car. So it's always good to check out your VIN before, um, you know, trying to hook onto it and communicate to it. One touch auto VIN, uh, two gig, four core processor, 10 inch uh, Android tablet uh, with uh, 12,600 milliamp. Uh, battery which is really good. I mean I've used this battery and I've had it on for days and days and days and it just keeps going so I'm happy with that. 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 onboard memory. Um, that's good if you want to do some screen captures and things like that. Uh, multiple languages, EN, France, DE, IT, ES, PT, Japan, Russia etc. Uh, parameters, um, it does take a USB and you can charge it off USB. Uh, temperatures, size is 10.9 by 7 1.75 inches thick or if you want mils, I like mils, 277 by um, 19, uh, 190 by 45, 45 thick and net weight is um, about a kilo and a half. All right, all right, we've done all the bits and pieces that don't, you know, don't really mean much. All right, here we go. We've got ourselves a case. Now, before you go buying one of these, go on to Top Don and set yourself up an account so when your machine arrives, you can simply just log on to it because without doing that, you're not going to be able to log on and use it. Okay, here is your little um, OBD connector, VCI, I believe they call it. Um, here's your tablet and it's got little seat belts and here are some accessories. Let's go through the accessories so we can get them out of the way so we can look at, look at the good stuff. All right, so we've got our standard serial port on one side and we've got our large connector. Um, to be honest, I don't know, is that Ben's? I think it's Ben's. It's probably not one I'm gonna use a lot. Another connector there with a, like a little Pac-Man in the middle, pins all the way around, uh, port on the side, uh, B20. Okay, two of them. A lot of these functions are, are not, you know, good for me. They're just functions and adapters that I probably won't use but I like to have them. Let's look behind what's behind door number one. Opening this up here. All right, so we have some OBD connectors. So you've got um, like your COM port serial port on that side, that side. Let's go through them. 
eh? There will be people that will want to know which is which and... Okay, so we've got two glass fuses and we've got uh, four smaller glass fuses. Don't know. Uh, our first little dongle has the serial port on one side and has a three pin connector on the other side. Part number on that, HA3. Next one here, we have um, a row of pins. Once again, I don't know the configuration of that. Uh, part number TA17. Maybe for that's for that Tata brand, I don't know. On the other side, you've got your serial port again. Serial port on this side, and a row of pins here. Part number G slash V12. Okay, for another Pacific model. Uh, part number TA22. That's the configuration there. Comp port on the other side. Uh, six pin. Part number CR6 and a comp port on that side. All right, that gets them out of the way. Okay, moving on. All right, uh, here we have a USB to the new USB-C, I believe it is. Nice cable, little red ends. We have a female OBD to a serial port with looks like a 12 volt injection of power. We have an OBD to a female OBD, so an extension. That didn't come with it. We also have some of these white little things. It, this is not like lock and key, these, these are not lollies. Okay, but there's three packs, so hopefully everyone will get some. Okay, these are just my information there. There's your user book. Take you through all the all the steps that you can do, auto VIN, um, uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, password letter, okay, you don't need to see my details. So there's just some paperwork that comes with it. All right, door number two. All right, what do we got here? More cables. Um, MH12 plus 16. OBD on that side, COM port on that side, and a plug on that side. One down. Now they've given me a USB here, and this is um, com compliant with our safeties, and the output is two amps, so that will help charge it up quite nicely. That's just a USB. And then we have COM port on one side, we have this pin on the other side there, and an OBD on that side. Part number for that, NN14 plus six. Oh, and more of these things, they're not lollies. All right. Okay, so we spoke about the injection of power to one of these cables. That would be this one with this 6.5mm six plug. And I'm looking here and we have a negative and a positive uh, clamp which has been fused. That's what those little fuses are for and that's where that plugs in. Okay, that's quite a nice looking cable. Um, okay, we also have a USB to the older, older type plug I don't know this one sorry but that actually is for this part right here they've used an older plug there so you just simply just plug that in there possibly for your updates so that you can update that device we have another um, injection of power going by the cigarette terminal in your car once again that is fused there's fuses underneath there and then your plug there a little LED to show you that you got power and here's another little plug I don't know three pin and we've got F T3 as the part number with your COM port on there. Look, I'm not sure it could be a, uh, to adapt to one of the modules in the car or one of the units in the car, or it could be to adapt to a particular type of car. I don't know. These are well beyond me, but I'm just doing an unboxing, just showing you what's what's in. Okay, we've got this uh, OBD port there. That's cool. Let's take the seatbelts off. Let's take it out. And there we have it. The plastic case, look, um, for the money, it works it's a bit shitty um, it's made of this plastic stuff it would be nice if it was a stronger better case the clips on it the shit house you know how long are they going to work for and the hinge again is just shit house plastic so just to be honest all right now it did come with a little thing that i had to peel off it does have a bit of screen protector over the screen but then when i peeled it off it left like residue there as you as you can see and that sucks all right, let's look at the tablet. You've got your on button, you've got your ports here. So we have a USB-C and standard USB on that side. Flipping it over now, nothing to see there. We've got two little speakers, a camera there, and we have this port on the back. So I believe there is something that does go in here on another module. 
let's just undo that so we can see. It's not access for a battery or anything. Um, looks like it can take a SIM card there as well, which is interesting because that, I then believe, would give it mobile data so that it can connect up to their server. Um, you can, I mean, I just connected on Wi-Fi, no big deal, but on some of their platforms, they're getting really advanced and they've got a, a cloud-based server where, um, you know, it's designed for, uh, to basically walk you through and help you when you're on a job. With me, I, I didn't need it, and this is the lower model, so it's not there, but I believe some of the cloud-based ones are designed for that, where it's interactive with the, with the company and they can help you out. Um, not sure what goes on there, but obviously some big module can go on there. This seemed to be the base version, um, this one here that I've bought. This is like, has all the audit, has all the diagnostics, but it wasn't their high-end, high-end model. It was like, you know, how do you say, minimum requirement for what I wanted to do, such as coding injectors, uh, fault fault. Live stream data, um, <coughs> looking at the way things are performing, things like that. Things I couldn't do on a more basic version. I did buy their basic version and it wasn't enough. It didn't have injector coding, it didn't have um, some of the live data things. And this one also had the key programming as well. So I thought it kind of ticks, ticks the boxes for me. All right, so let's turn it on and um, hopefully, you know, I might even turn the lights off. I'm going to turn the lights off so we can get a better view of this. Unfortunately, this one did not come with a HDMI output, which means that um, I cannot record that HDMI directly. I would have to then screencast it and then do it that way. All right, so we've got um, scan. You could do that. That's your automatic scan. You basically uh, plug it in and it'll do a scan to see what it's connected to. That can eliminate the problems of finding the correct make and model. Let's go back. Um, so we have, um, sorry, that's auto scan. Um, scan means that you select the make model and it'll do that. So auto scan is this one here and it'll come up with the make and model. Now how do we get out of this? There we go. Yes. Alright, let's go through the makes and model. Let's just do it all in one video. That might be the easiest way. So we've got all uh, recently used America, uh, Europe, Asia, Chinese. So this is all of them here. Australia so this will help you know if you're buying for a particular car a particular brand whether or not it's there this is all of them I'm just moving through the menu so you can you can see them all and I hope we're in focus yeah one that I found it didn't have was LDV. It does have Tata, VW, and some other brands I've never even heard of. Okay, so that's that's the brands there. Let's go into the service. This is the bit you, most people are going to really want to know about. So A slash F, brake oil, SAS, BMS, bleeding, uh, ETS, uh, TPMS, something to do with the tires, DPF, diesel particulate filter, um, AdBlue, ABS, Coolant, EGR, um, half of this, I know most of them, um, Engine, Immobilizer, Immobilizer, inject, Injector, uh, Languages, Seats, Odo, um, and things like that. So most of these are relevant to many cars, but sometimes your car doesn't even have that function, so it won't be relevant. Such as uh, for me, uh, the car I programmed on a Hyundai didn't have half of these, like Seats isn't there, um, you know, Odo correction not there and things like that so it really depends on what your car's got to what of these functions you can use some have oil reset lights and things like that and that's all there brake ble brake bleeding and it's all there injectors I used uh, that was quite good quite easy immobilizer I used and remote programming I used all of which um, got the tick from me they were nice and easy airbag I haven't used um, tires windows I haven't used um, the brake ble bleeding I have used and I found that to be good as well all right uh, ADAS ADS calibration adjustment coverage network fail okay uh, module tester oscilloscope and this one 
I believe one of them is an add-on. Uh, update support, so look at support. So we've got a team viewer login there. So that would be connecting to the to the top down server. All right, library OBD faults codes library. So this is um, you put in your in your code and it's going to tell you. So let's go P zero one one one. Enter. Air intake temperature sensor um, range. So there's uh, a library of online and also a few examples in there which will help you get over the line when you're trying to find fault, fault find something and it's coming up with an error code. If you're not sure what it is, you can look into it. You've even got Chrome, you've got YouTube, Facebook, and a few other uh, references here, OBD Wiki, um, Autodata, things like this, which can, you know, tech data, which can kind of help you when you're needing to identify what the problem is. Uh, network not available, okay. So I don't have this on Wi-Fi at the moment. If I did, I could I could pull up these resources. Uh, learning material. Once again, I think we need Wi-Fi. Probably should have uh, hooked it onto Wi-Fi. All right, um, up the top, you've got your, uh, your button there, your devices, profile, all that sort of stuff, user. Uh, you, you can record the screen, you can take screenshots. One of the things I didn't mention, sorry, but there is a camera there as well. Okay, all right, so let's go through and um, Let's go through and show you some of the diagnostic functions it has. And one of the ones, all right, let's try a difficult one. Uh, let's try something like um, a Mercedes or something, or a BMW that something is, you know, generally a European hard car. Um, BMW, there we go. Okay. Now it does take 30 seconds to connect. It's actually looking for the Bluetooth dongle, but it's not going to find it. But hopefully it will be able to get into the menus to um, to see what's going on. From there, you have your list of your functions as well. Everything from resetting, injectors, all this sort of stuff. All right, so it's not going to let us. We have some examples here of uh, what, the, what the actual coverage can do. Uh, engine, automatic transmission, anti-lock brakes, airbags, AC, dashboard, electronic throttle control, mirrors. Uh, mirror seats, memory, any theft, cruise control, um, and then it goes down into summary. Reading ECU information, re uh, reading DTC, uh, clearing DTC, which is like your error codes, reading vehicle, running data, uh, and all that, and it goes through here. Uh, function of key test, display status of all keys, you know, uh, go away, go away, cancel. Um, so that was just on the BMW here. Um, you do need an extra module if you're going to be doing the keys on this one, but this Phoenix was compatible with um, the key module, which is an extra $1,500 device. So in theory, if I was to buy that, I could start doing some of these type of cars. Uh, but, you know, I bought it because I want it to be compatible, but I'm not really using it. Um, so we've got the CAS system, individual key numbering, enable, disable, reset, uh, fault counter, EGS, uh, DME, DDE, EMF again, AL, active steering, ARS, DSC, EHC, and it goes on and on and on. A lot of these terminologies I'm not familiar with, with some notes down the bottom as well. So that's just BMW as an example. Uh, so it's telling me not to forget my VCI, which is plugged into the OBD as I'm getting out of the car. Obviously they're expensive, they're paired to the machine, they're registered to your account, so yeah. So that was uh, one example. Um, we should possibly look at another example. We've got Ford Europe and Ford Australia is different, uh, and it was there actually. Cancel. Okay, Ford Australia. All right, so we can do all our fault codes, clearing fault codes, ABS calibration, climate control, configure exterior lights, function test, new BEM, uh, new module installation, PAT, PATS function, passive anti-theft system function, uh, power balancing, program functions, radio calibration, remote key learning, res uh, reset, keep alive memory, steering angle, sensor calibration, steering angle, steering check. And that's just, uh, we can't go through all the actual makes and models because we'd need to be plugged in via OBD to actually do that. So we can't do that, but that gives you a bit of an idea of what's uh, what's going on. Let's have a little look at Nissan now, because there's a lot of Nissan imports these days. Mini Nissan. Okay, so we've got two. And then we've got Nissan GTR, which is interesting. Let's go this one here. All right, so unfortunately I can't go through the makes and models without having an active OBD connection. Uh, but we've got body control module, write data, 
uh, match the BCM read write configuration, VIN code correction after replacing controller computer, uh, passive entry, passive start, write data, um, and the, the list kind of goes on. And Nissan as well. So we've got basically all of what I've uh, read out, but plus some engines, engine systems, throttle, um, idle, fuel pressure, ignition, target, all of that. Now all of this can be brought up on a, on um, graphs, and it all can be brought up just by going to the live data. Unfortunately, I don't have it plugged in for that to actually do that. I might have um, I might have in my library oh, some pictures of it. Uh, diagnostics data stream examples. No examples. Customer management photo album. Okay, so I took a photo of um, a VIN number. Um, just that way it can do auto find because you can actually use the camera to read the VIN number. It didn't work perfectly. Uh, screen recorder. Okay, so I didn't actually record that. It was just a quick uh, video that I recorded. It was a screen work recorder. Um, I really should have recorded yesterday when I was I had five different graphs up here: fuel pressure, uh, coil, um, mass flow, air, and I had all of these systems as a, as I'm driving around because I'm trying to see if everything's functioning properly. Um, so that was you know pretty cool. Um, anyway, so there's just a quick look at the Top Don Phoenix. Look, I bought it as an entry level um, scan tool for automotive repair with the benefit with the benefits of having the ability to do the key programming as well and some of the advanced key programming for Mercedes and BMW with the extra add-on if I was to use that in the future plus it also has the ability to do EEPROM programming um, all of which it will walk you through very similar to the Autel uh, 508 or 608 but um, I haven't used that in depth but I probably will but we'll see how we go with that later on when I when I have the need as far as the rest of the things using it look it was about fifteen hundred dollars as far as using it uh, for a diagnostic scanner look I'm happy with it I bought another one uh, which was about a third of the price it really didn't have the functions this one has the functions uh, for what I need it for um, injector coding live stream data all of these type of things like really in depth and also because it's the baseline Phoenix one means you know, you're going to get a lot more sort of um, coverage of what you can do with it compared with the cheap one. The cheap one suit a particular market, but I needed that little bit more advanced. So I think this tool might be, how do you say, the, uh, the benchmark or the starting point for a lot of workshops um, who want all those features. Because when I looked over all the specs, I found this uh, Phoenix Plus to be the one um, kind of en not entry level, but, um, you know, a, start a good starting point good starting point some of the other phoenix ones were too advanced cloud functions all this sort of stuff it was it made it very very expensive and um not not necessary and you know not not necessary for me and the ability to have that key function makes it cool i have used uh topped on ninja for key programming before i found it very good i did try key programming on this but i ended up using my older um key programmer because um it just went through a little bit more seamlessly and also i had an issue with the pin numbers which i kept getting into lockout I was also able to see the state of the body control unit as well, that it was in lockout and it was on the screen, um, very similar to the advanced diagnostics uh, Smart Pro. Um, but yeah, I was able to program keys with it. I was able to program remotes with it and it was walk through, step through, push buttons quite easy. So I was happy with that. All the diagnostic uh, things that I've done, recoding injectors and um, checking um, sensors, um, simulating the sensors and stuff like that, that it all worked fairly seamlessly. So I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, the battery life is phenomenal. Uh, the kickstand on the back also so allows you to um, hook it onto the steering wheel just like that so that it just sits on the steering wheel so in all fairness um, yeah I'm, I'm happy with it it's a tool that I'll be keeping for some time and um, the software on the device you get one year free updates and then they want you to keep paying free updates if you don't you're still left with a machine that you can use uh, but you won't get the latest and greatest all right just looking um, so America all of this this is all of them so BYD's in there And I'll just scroll through so that everybody can read it and they can know whether or not this is actually going to suit their needs. For me, it's the sort of tool I probably use twice a month, but on saying that, you cannot do some of the tasks that I want to do without having a scan tool, a reasonable scan tool. And unfortunately, it puts you in a position you have to buy one. And I think at the price of 1500 bucks off eBay, 
um, I'm fairly happy with that. I mean, I bought a $200 tool and it was just basically error code. Uh, it'll just read you an error code. That's all it would do. You can't change anything. You can't program anything. As with this, you actually can. Okay, there's the kit. Leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching.